G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward and today I have a brand new pattern for you all and I've been wanting to make this one for a while to go with our Jemima Puddle Duck. So this of course is a very simply styled Peter Rabbit. Holds his own very special carrot. He's actually a shelf sitter but very, very easy to make. Cute little feet, his own little blue jacket and of course a gorgeous little tail behind. So. This is a pattern that's even suitable for a beginner. It really is super simple. What a beautiful nursery gift it would make. So of course you don't have to make it up in classic Peter Rabbit colors as I have. Um, you can make them colorful any way you like. Made up primarily of felt and fabric. You just need your free pattern, which I've got all ready for you in the description box below. You'll find your free pattern templates there. You just need to print those out. You can print them on your own home printer. Do set your printer to be printing at actual size or perhaps A4. And do message me if you have any problems with printing at all. And remember that I include all seam allowances within all of my patterns. So let's get busy making Peter Rabbit. Okay, so let's get started on our beautiful Peter Rabbit. Um, and we're gonna start by looking at our materials and requirements. We are going to need two main body pieces. Both of these are cut from felt, which have been interfaced with fusible woven medium weight interfacing. So we do need those to be interfaced to keep everything nice and stable. You'll notice that I have one in the natural bunny color. That's for the back. The front I make in the cream. You can have any kind of cream or a sort of an ecru color will work. You might be making a bunny that looks, you might be making a pink bunny. So I'm making mine completely traditional um, in a very watercolor sort of palette. So these are our front and back pieces. Onto that front section, we're going to be adding our thigh sections of those little in the same natural color. These pieces have fusible webbing applied because we're going to be ironing those into place on the front there. We're also going to be adding our coat sides. So the front of our coat, the little lapel sides, and they also have the fusible webbing applied. Now you can use felt, you can use fabric for these pieces. I do prefer to use felt, but I am using for the coat section, I'm using a finer grade of felt. It's only one millimeter thick and it's a wool viscose blend. And it is the perfect color for his jacket, given with the style I'm going for. So that's what I'm going to be doing there. So this is the front part of his jacket. We also have the same thing with the fusible webbing applied for the back and that will go on the back piece for the back of his jacket. To make his arms, which are going to be inserted into the side seams here, we need to have a piece of appropriate fabric and it does need to be fabric. So bring something in that is close to your tones. This is close as I could get. And I folded that fabric over right sides together and I've traced my two arm pieces onto it because we're going to stitch directly on that line in this case and then cut them out. We need them to just be fabric because they're quite fine. We want to be able to turn them through and not have too much bulk. So I'll show you how to do that when we get to there. So those are the arms. We have little sleeves that are incorporated into the design as well. And of course, mine are just the plain felt. Remember that mine is a very fine grade of felt. Yours might be fabric. And those are your two pieces that will go either side incorporated and the little, the little arms will sit inside. If you've made my little Kimmy doll, this is very, very similar in the way that we put it together. You'll also need a base for our bunny and we have two pieces of felt and they are, they also have the fusible webbing applied. Now, 
we need the fusible webbing because we're going to be fusing it together but initially we're going to be sewing around it turning it through and then fusing it together because we want to add a little bit of filling in these feet so this sits on the base and it really is just two tiny little toes that poke out of the base there and again that's of course matched up with that neutral tone you'll need a base support and I'm using my 75 millimeter wooden disc. If you have one, it's the perfect size. If you don't, you have a template there to be able to cut one out of matte board, which is a nice and strong picture framing matte board, something similar to that. We have a little tail and I have the two pieces cut from felt. These have interfacing applied and I have one side is the light color and one side is the neutral color. So that's all our body pieces. Now let's move on to our head. So we have our head pieces and they are both that neutral color and they are both interfaced. You can see there our front and back head and then we have our face details. So the front muzzle section of the face I've cut from felt with fusible webbing applied. We're going to be adding that one right there then we have a second piece that goes down the center of the nose and it is the same color as your background neutral fabric that will press into place over the top. We're going to be stitching in a beautiful little happy smile. We've got ear inserts here in the pink. They all have fusible webbing applied. They're going to be going in there. And we also need some eyes. Now I'm going for button eyes and I'm going for brown rather than black. I don't want anything too heavy and I will be sewing these on with black thread so I get a nice black pupil. So they can be four button or two button eyes. Doesn't really uh, matter too much. The eye size is around about, it's probably about 13, 14 millimeter. You can size down, but probably not up because you need that nice color surrounding them. So we will also need our little carrot at the end. And we've got our two pieces of felt there. You can also make the carrot in interfaced fabric. That will work just as well. I just happen to have the perfect felt. Again, it's that lightweight felt and you'll need some kind of greenery to pop out the top of that carrot. I've got a beautiful variegated pearl thread here. You could use wool, you could cut shreds of green felt, just something that indicates that little bit of foliage at the top. You might want to add a couple of little buttons to your jacket, Peter's jacket. I've just got a couple, just two will show at the top there. Um, and they are little classic brass buttons there. We will need a larger button for attaching the head, um, something probably around, at least 25 millimeters to attach that head. You'll need polyester filling because that's how we're going to fill him up. Some clear craft glue, of course, all of your extra strong threads to match your project. And I will be using some pearl thread in brown just for adding some claws, for adding a nose section in there and a bit more detailing. So that's it. That's all we need for as far as materials and requirements go. Let's get started on putting this bunny together. So I like to start by making the arms and the sleeves because then they're all set aside ready to pop into that seam line when we put the body together. So as I said, we've got our piece of fabric. We folded it right sides together and traced around your pattern templates for two arms, one reverse. So now I'm just gonna to go to my machine. I'm gonna sew exactly on that line. I'm gonna leave this top section open. Do make sure to back and forth on your start and finish. And I'm going to be using, my stitch length will be a set at a number two, just using my all purpose Gudeman polyester thread there. And I do use a jeans needle throughout. So I'm gonna get both of those stitched into place. This is actually heat erasable pen. Um, so once I've cut it out, I can give them a press and all of those marks will be gone. So that's your first task. 
Once you have those arms stitched, you can see there, I've gone ahead and just cut those out, leaving about a three millimeter seam allowance all the way around. And so now it's just a matter of turning those through, which is much easier if you're using forceps. Take that in through. And we want to make sure that we gently push out all those seams. Remember that we haven't got any interfacing there. So be quite gentle as you do that. But you want to make sure that all of those seams are rolled out. I get in there with my knitting needle. I want a nice rounded little pour at the end. And I want those seams completely pushed out. So I even take mine, I'll take mine now and give that a press, give both of those a press before we add a bit of filling. So now we're just going to add a little bit of filling as I have with this one and I'm going to really pack out that little pour and up just a little way above the wrist so it softens off as it comes up here. But this little hand section is packed quite firm. So easiest to do with your forceps if you have them. We're just going to open that one up and take that filling down. And be mindful of trying to create a nice flattened little rounded pore shape. Not too much pressure on the end there because we don't have interfacing there. Just keep adding your filling as you go, supporting the end until that's just like that one. We need this section to be all soft so that it will wrap around our little doll. The sleeve goes over the top as well. So that has both those little paws and wrists filled. We can pop those aside and now we're going to create the sleeves that they're going to tuck into. Now, on the straight edge of each of these, which is the cuff line, I've just pressed under a four millimeter hem. Mine is um, felt, yours might be fabric. Either way, we just need to fold that over one time, give it a press and then top stitch on the outside as I have here into place and just use a matching thread so that can't be seen unless you're particularly looking to use your top stitching as a feature point. Um, and then we will get these put together. So then I, now that I have all those little cuffs done, the little hem on each of the cuffs there, we're going to take each sleeve and put right sides together. And we're going to stitch the top seam. It's a four millimeter seam allowance and we're going to top stitch the lower seam. We leave both of these ends open. Do the same, exactly the same on the other sleeve. So I've gone ahead and turned those sleeves through and given them a press. And now we're going to pop the arm in like I have this one. So just open up the top. You can go from the top of the bottom, doesn't really matter. Just want to open up that sleeve and we're going to drop the little arm in. You want to push it all the way through, pull that hand out at the base, and we're just wanting to line up those two top edges. And it will just leave that little bit of the arm exposed, a little bit of the hand exposed there. You'll find those two edges will meet up nicely. Get them lined up. Make sure the top part of your arm is lined up at the top there. I like to give that a press and then I'm just going to stitch very close to the edge. That's going to join all of those together. Just like you can see there, we've got our perfect little arms with a sleeve ready to pop into the seams. So we can pop those little arms aside now and get started on the details on our body front. So we've got our thigh pieces here. I'm just going to remove that backing paper and we're going to line it up with the bottom edge and the side there. You'll see they'll fit beautifully. 
and we're just going to get those pressed into place with a hot iron and a protective cloth. Once those thigh pieces are pressed into place, we now just have to stitch this top edge here and here. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can, it's up to you how much hand sewing you want to do. You could sew a blanket applique stitch with those to pop them in place, or you could go ahead and sew a close satin stitch on the machine. That's what I'm going to do. I want to be able to show you that you can basically put this one together with almost no hand stitching at all in that way. So I'm going to use a matching thread and set my zigzag to be very close and stitch both those sections. You can see there that that zigzag satin stitch is a really beautiful effect. When you get it nice and neat and close like that, it's absolutely lovely. And I do like this looking all very uh, nice and flat and professional. So my next piece is to go on. I've removed the backing paper and we line up our side jacket pieces. Again, you can see that they line up with that body front all the way to the top. It starts right at the base here. See, it's right on that thigh. I'm gonna get both of those pressed into place and also on my body back piece, I'm going to add the back of the jacket. That lines up as well beautifully. I'm gonna get that one pressed into place as well. You can see that on each of those lower edges of the back pieces and the front of the jacket, I've done that same stitch, of course, in a different thread. But on the lapels of the jacket, I'm going to sew a straight stitch very close to the edge and then another straight stitch to create a sort of a, a button line. And it just really marks out that side of that jacket. We don't see a lot of it once those arms are in place, but it's still nice to have that finish. And I will be adding those couple of buttons. So if they're framed up nicely in a double um, top stitching line, it will look a whole lot more professional. So I'm gonna get those done and show you how that looks. So I hope you can see that, that double line of stitching on those lapels just gives it such a lovely professional finish and you can see the buttons will sit so beautifully along that line. We'll put those on once we know exactly where those arms will sit. So now we're gonna bring in those arms. You've got a mark on your pattern template on the body and there's a mark and it's where your arms are to be inserted into that seam. So what we're going to do we're just going to pop them on and we're going to stitch right close to the edge there just to hold them in place. Just do it one at a time, repeat with the other side and you'll have those two little arms in place ready and we're gonna encapsulate that all when we sew the body together. I have gone ahead and sewn on a couple of little buttons there. You can see now where I've put them is where they will still be seen. Remember that we've got the head going on there so we want to leave room that will be attached like that. I still want to be able to see those two buttons. You can put them wherever you like. Now, our next step is to put our front body pieces and back body pieces together. So you do have marks on your pattern pieces that will help you line that up, particularly at the top there. Clamp that one into place. You'll find you've got your side marks there. And we're going to sew this up all the way around and leave that base open. And as we do that, of course, we're going to be incorporating those arms into that seam. Make sure that you check that your sides are lining up so that your, the back of your jacket lines up nicely right down to the base. Now I like to overcast mine first so that I know that everything is exactly where it should be. So I'll just do an overcasting tacking stitch all the way around so I can take out those clips. And then I will sew that with a four millimeter seam allowance and I will sew that two times. Do make sure you back and forth on your start and finish. You can go ahead and turn that body through and that's how your body should look. 
all ready to be filled, which we're going to do now. We're going to take our polyester filling. I'm going to use my forceps to fill this one and you're going to pack that, pack that entire body really, really firm because the top of the neck here, we need nice and firm because that's where the head is attached and we need that to be nice and stable and you just continue working and packing that in, filling out that body right up until the edge here, just a little way from the edge. Use your wool felting needle if you've got one to help you pack that in. You want this all to be nice and tight. Then we're going to be adding that base disc that will keep it all nice and flat and help it stand up. When we add that disc, it does compress all those fibers down too, but we need to be working with a very firm body. So that has my body filled. You can see how firm that is. Very little give in that at all. It's probably filled to about two centimeters, 2.5 centimeters from the edge there, but it is packed absolutely flat and firm. So my next step is to take a double strand of extra strong thread and I've sewn a running stitch all the way around the outside edge. It left my tail ends hanging so that I can tie it off. I've tied my first knot and now we just take our wooden disc or your, you may have a mat board disc. We're gonna slip that in there. It's a nice snug fit, which is exactly what we want. It'll give us a really beautiful base. You want to really push that down. Make sure it's nice and flat. Pull on those. Now we don't need to pull it all the way into the center. Just pull it in as tight as you can. It'll pull in a little more than that. It also helps tighten all this area up here. So get that nice and tight, knot that off at least four times. And there we go. That has our beautiful little Peter Rabbit body. See, that's all nice and flush pulled down in there now. Packed out beautifully, waiting for the base. So we're gonna take our two base pieces. I've removed that backing paper. Remember that they had fusible webbing on them. And just a tip for this, if you're going to be sewing any pieces together with fusible webbing and the glue side is going to be under your machine needle, you need to make sure that that fusible webbing is very, very cooled. I like to do it the day before so that that glue is really, really set. So then it will just slip under your machine. Well, you can't just take it straight from the iron and try and sew it because it will just gum everything up. Um, so now I've put right sides together of those two pieces. We'll be cutting an opening in this in one side. So all I'm going to do is just stitch with that four millimeter seam allowance all the way around that whole outer edge. We only need to sew it one time. It's not gonna come under any pressure. Once you have that base section stitched, you need to just draw a line right in the center, about 45 to 50 millimeters right in the middle. We're going to snip that and we're gonna snip just through one of those layers. So just gonna get that started, get my very sharp little scissors in there. And this is just for us to be able to turn it through. This section will be going on the base so it won't be seen, it'll be glued into place. Just cut that open enough. just to be able to turn all of that foot section through that opening. Make sure that you roll all of those seams out and definitely at this stage, don't press it. Because remember, we've got all that fusible webbing in there. We need that, but not just yet. We need to first of all, just put a little bit of stuffing, go in through that opening. We're just gonna put a little bit of filling in those feet. We're only going to see the tiniest little bit of toes poking out from that body, but it's just a super cute look. So I'm really, really packing that in so it's nice and tight. And it's just this front section here on each foot.
those little toes should just curve inwards a little pointing to each other just a slightly pigeon toe look certainly don't want to overstuff them just enough for us to be able to add a couple of stitches in there to create some little toe claws but for now now that I've got that filling there I'm going to take this now to my iron and I'm going to fuse that all closed and trying to bear in mind to follow the line of what is the circle base fuse that into place with a hot iron and protective cloth so that base is now all fused together into one piece and we've got our stuffing captured there at the front you can try your little bunny there standing up and you can see those little feet are just going to be tucked in nicely what I like to do while I still have access here is I've got my uh, single strand of pearl thread just brown pearl thread and I'm coming in just in one of those layers I'm going to stitch a couple of claws in just little toe separations that just give a nice little bit of detail I'm going to start right in the center it's just a small detail but it does make a whole lot of difference so um, I'm using eight ply here I'm just going to take that around so I'm going to come in underneath in a similar spot right in the center then I'm going to come out just to the side a little going to squeeze those stitches down again on the underneath going in and coming out the same on the other side keeping that tension up and again I'm going to go in the underneath now go through exit underneath here again pulling on those threads and you've created that that nice little clawed foot there I'm going to go back through to this layer through that same hole and I'll just stitch a couple of stitches to keep that tension up and hold those into place it's a cute little effect you can do it on the hands as well here I would if they were felt but I'm not going to because they're fabric there we go little foot just makes all the difference indication of little toes there so I'll just repeat on the other side I'm now going to take my clear craft glue and I'm going to glue the underside where our knots are of that base nice and liberally right up to the front there we're going to be doing a blanket stitch blanket applique stitch sorry around the whole outside of this for a nice professional finish see that glue there and now we simply are going to line it up so his feet line up at the front and you're going to drop that one on there check that you've got it in the right position on the base you can see how well that sits 
just want to press that all down. You could throw some pins through there on the edges if you want to. You want to make sure that that front section is adhered as well. A couple of pins can go straight through. Keep it all together. And likewise, all the way around the base, particularly at the sides here. Then we're gonna set that one aside and we are going to let it dry absolutely completely before we come back to do our stitching. So I'm back to my base now, which is all nice and dry, and we can sew our blanket applique stitch around that base. So to start off with, I've got a single strand of pearl thread. I've got a knot in the end. I've just taken my needle in just in between those two layers and come out right on the edge. I'm starting at the front side of the foot here. So just about there. We're not gonna be stitching this section here. We will do a couple of stitches in the center, but not on the feet themselves. So that's your start point. So pull that one through, that knot can be hidden in between those layers there. And we're just going to take a small stitch and we're gonna come out exactly where we started at that starting point. We're coming out through the fabric on the body. Bring that through the loop. So it is a blanket applique stitch that we're doing, but we're doing it right on an edge. I will give you the link at the top of the screen there that will show you how to sew a blanket applique stitch. It's a little bit different in this case um, because we're sewing it onto that 3D shape but we're still just outlining a shape with our thread. So you can see each time I'm going through all of the layers and coming out actually on that body piece. And pulling that needle out through that loop each time, I'm using a matching pearl thread, keeping my stitches nice and even and it's just going to bind those two edges together and it really does give it a lovely professional neat finish. You can see there that little stitch. I'm gonna make my way all the way around and then I'm just going to do the same thing, just a few stitches across that very front section. So let's have a look at putting this tail together. So we've got our two tail pieces. We're gonna put the wrong sides together because we're not gonna turn this one through. And we've got some pearl thread ready, just a single strand of pearl thread. I'm going to start just at the base here. I'll just throw a clip in there to hold the points together. So a single strand of my pearl thread and I'm going for the chocolate brown that I've used throughout. I'm just going to come in between the two layers, bring my needle out and I'm sewing a blanket stitch. I'll put the link at the top of the screen there for you if you haven't sewn a blanket stitch before. I'm going to keep it nice and small. Blanket stitch is simply taking your thread and going through all of your layers and then bringing your needle out through the thread loop. Pull that nice and firm. So your needle goes through all of the layers and it comes out through the thread loop that gives you the little thread binding around the edge. So that's gonna cover our raw edges and it gives it a nice, pretty hand-sewn look. It's nice to have a little bit of detailing like that. Keep your stitches nice and even and make sure that you rotate your work as you go so that your stitches are all fanning out evenly. So I'm gonna continue on until I get about to here. I'm just gonna leave enough space for me to add a little bit of filling. So you can see that I've left my needle on. I've just got a little space there 
just enough room for me to be able to get in between those layers and add a little bit of filling. Don't want to overstuff this. Just want to give it just a little bit of volume. We're going to be attaching this just with a small button. Of course you could make a tail out of felt or fabric yo-yos. That would work as well. I just like this very authentic, more realistic sort of a shape. So I'm just tucking that all in there. Grab my felting needle. helps tuck those fibres in and now I can go ahead and finish off my blanket stitch to match that up. So that completes our beautiful little Peter Rabbit body, everything nice and neatly stitched into place. We can pop that one aside and let's get started on the head. So now let's make a start on Peter Rabbit's head and we just need one of our front face pieces. They're both the same, it doesn't matter back and front. And we're going to take our face mask piece, going to remove that backing paper and we are going to position this one. You can see where it will fit exactly. You want to make sure it's perfectly centered. The measurement from here to the, the start of your face detail template is around about seven to eight millimeters because we have a seam here. And when we turn that through, we don't want that face piece to be sitting too close to the edge. So about seven to eight millimeters, make sure it's all lined up and get that pressed into place with a hot iron and a protective cloth. So once you have that face mask pressed into place, you can go ahead and stitch around that edge using whichever um, technique you want to. So I'm going to stay with my machine zigzag stitching in a matching color in the cream, but I'm going to bring the width down on my zigzag so it's all quite small just to go around that entire edge. Again, you could blanket applique that one into place if you wish. Our next pieces that we need to iron on are our ear, inside ear pieces. Now you can see where they sit. I've got them marked on your pattern piece, which is the inside of the ear, because they do look quite the same either side. They are angled to sit on the outer side of your ears, because we want this realistic sort of a look at the front there. And also we're going to line up that center nose piece, which will line up perfectly with that top brow and we want to get all of those pressed into place and I'm going to use the same stitch in a pink around those ears and then I'm going to do the same very small zigzag stitch around the entire nose piece. I will be adding some extra pearl thread there but for now, it's just about getting that piece stitched into place and certainly use matching thread. So there you can see I've got all of my pieces stitched into place and our next step is to add at that lip line, which I'm going to sew on the machine. I've used a heat erasable marker here and I've simply taken my ruler and ruled a line straight down from the center point of that nose five millimeters and then I just take I'm using just a little joint circle there to create a little smile either side you could use a button the end of a cotton reel anything that gives you the shape that you're after now you don't have to have your bunny super smiley but I just that's what I'm after um, you can have more of a classic uh, Y shape inverted Y shape if you like but now I'm going to take that one to the machine and I'm going to stitch over that line 
with a, I may put top stitching thread through my, run it through my machine. If you do use top stitching thread in your machine, do use it in your bobbin and your top thread um, and then it will come out nice and evenly. Um, otherwise it tends to be a little bit, it puckers up. So remember top and bottom thread if you're using top stitching thread, otherwise you can just stitch over those lines two times. Alternatively, you could hand stitch that one just with an embroidery stitch uh, to get the same effect. So I've used top stitching thread in there in my machine and you can see that it does give you a lovely clear lip line. Um, and also it means you only have to sew over that line once so you're more likely to get it perfect than trying to double back with two lines of stitching. So just a tip there. So just to finish off that nose section, I want to outline just this area here on the underside of the nose. So I've got a double strand of eight ply pearl thread in the brown and I'm going to come in from the underneath right on the corner there pull that one through it's a double strand so it's going to give me a nice clear line and I'm going to go in right in the center you want to make sure that those threads aren't twisted as you lay them out Pull that one into place and we've got that nice under that nose, that nice outline. So now we come across to the other side, just match it up the same. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. Pull that stitch down and dive into that center. And we get a perfect little outlined nose. Use your thumb to lay that stitch. Pull them out again if they get twisted. And then just anchor those stitches with a couple of knots at the back. And that completes our face front features. So he's all coming together. So now our next step, we put the eyes on when the head is all put together because we can get some nice pull in. So now we're just going to put the front head and the front and the back head together. Now you've got marks on your pattern template that show you where we're going to sew to. I do like to overcast mine first so that I get it exactly right. But those marks just below the ears there, those are your start points. So I'm going to overcast all the way around from point to point on that lower edge. And then I will stitch my four millimeter seam allowance. Um, and I will sew that seam two times because we're going to be adding stuffing and really make sure that you're back and forth on that start and finish because we're going to put a fair bit of pressure on that when we turn that one through. I've gone ahead and I have turned that one through and isn't that just a beautiful little face? Lovely to see that shape coming together. So I've taken my knitting needle and pushed out all of those seams. So very important. And do make sure that you roll them all out. So now we're going to add the filling to the face. We don't add a huge amount of filling. And you need to be mindful while you're filling this one, the shape that we're looking for. So we are looking for a nicely firm filled face, but it's fairly flattish. That's just the design. So we're not looking for a, 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 you know, a big ball shape. So I always start with the chin down the front and make sure that's very well filled out. And you notice that I'm keeping my, my fingers behind and my thumb on top. That's going to stop me from filling it out the opposite way. So I'm filling out cheeks. Those very important cheeks at the side. each side there, tucking that all in. I'm going to be using my felting needle. If you stuff this in a way that makes it expand this way, 
your head, the head is going to look a whole lot smaller than it should. So you see it's all about pushing out to those sides and keeping your middle section quite flattened. Now as I go, I can get my little felting needle in there, right in there, and I can really tuck those fibres into those cheek and chin areas so that they stay put and they're not coming out at me. So I'm going to keep filling right up until just a little way from the top because we want to be able to close these ears off and we're just going to stitch around the ears and across the top of the head to close this off. But you want to make sure that all of this section is really filled out. So just because we want a sort of a flattened look, it doesn't mean we want it to be squashy. We need it to be very, very firm. So that's how your finished stuffed head should look. Very, very firm. If I pull those ears down, you can have a look in there and you can see that I've just squished it together with my hands and I've just tucked all of those fibres in and you can see just how firm that is. When we add the eyes we're going to really pull them in from behind and it's going to flatten that area out. So I've got room there still to close the top of the head and those ears. So my next step is to go ahead and glue those ear pieces and I'm going to do that quite liberally because the glue is also going to help those ears stand up nicely. Make sure you're getting right to the edges there and right down to the base of that ear. And then we're going to line those two ear pieces up and they should match perfectly. Now your wonder clips are going to help you out a lot here if you have them, particularly right on that base there. Clamp that in. One at the top there. And right down at the start. Make sure those edges are really sealed. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing with the opposite ear. So that has both of those ears glued together and try and mould them to tip slightly at the top. As that glue is drying, it's going to dry in that position. So we still have to sew around them, but if you can just encourage them to dry that way, you can leave them leaning against something so that that occurs. And we're going to let those dry completely before we come back and do our stitching. So while Peter's ears are drying, let's make his cute little carrot. So we've got our two carrot pieces, very simple to make. Mine's felt with interfacing applied. It, mine is a lightweight felt though. So you can certainly make this one in fabric. You may have a great carroty fabric print. So I'm just going to put right sides together with this one and we're going to stitch our four millimetre seam allowance from the top all the way around. I do sew it two times because we're going to stuff that quite firm and make sure you're back and forth on your start and finish as well as always. I've created a little carrot top from just my pearl thread. I've just put some strands together folded it in half and then I've tied around the base there because that's going to sit just in the top there and I've just made it nice and full and as I said you could use anything at all you could even just cut some strips of felt you may have a tassel a small tassel will work you can pop that in the top if you've got it in the right color that would be very handy so I'm going to go ahead and get this one stitched up and turned through 
You can go ahead and turn that carrot through and then we are going to just pack that nice and firm with our polyester filling. I'm going to take my forceps right down there to the base. We're going to be doing a little bit of um, sculpting, stitching on this. Very, very simple. We're just going to do some wrapping around, but we do need it to be nice and firm so that it can handle that stitching. So pack that one firm all the way, almost to the top. We're just going to be drawing in at the top there. Do use your wool felting needle again to pack that in. So that has my carrot filled and I've also taken my felting needle and made a little divot in there ready to accommodate my carrot top. Before we close that up, I'm taking a single strand of pearl thread in a slightly different colour than my carrot and I'm going to dive straight in there and I want to bring my needle out at the base of my carrot so I'm using my my medium doll needle. I just want to come out somewhere just on the seam line if I can, near to the base. There we go, pull that one through. That's going to hold nicely and now I can go ahead and sew a gathering stitch, a running stitch with a doubled strand of extra strong thread all the way around that top ev edge leaving the tail ends hanging. So that has my running stitch done. You see it's very close to the edge there and I've got my first knot tied ready. I've still got my needle on. So now I can tuck in my little carrot top and pull on those threads to secure little carrot top in there as I tie it off. So get it all tucked in, tie off those ends. Very, very tight around the base and knot that off at least four times. And you can, because your needle's still on, you can pass your needle back and forth through there just to make sure it's really, really secure. So that has my beautiful little carrot top all secured. I've threaded the end of that pearl thread that I had coming out from the base back onto my needle. And now all I need to do is just go around and around that carrot at intervals. It just adds a little bit more detail. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can be quite random. Carrots can be quite gnarly. just to give it that little bit of pulled in detail. You can see now why we needed that to be packed nice and firm. Because I still have it on my needle, I can just dive in, keeping up that tension. and then come up underneath here and knot off a couple of times, lose my thread ends in, and we've got that lovely little gnarly carrot. So my finishing touch, if you like, you can go ahead and just color up where that stalk starts with an alcohol marker, which I find is best. And it's just about coloring in, indicating a bit of depth in some of those areas. I'm just using terracotta here, nice deep colour. It just gives the whole thing just a little bit more dimension. So wherever it's pulled in, it, it would naturally be darker. It would be recessed and darker. So we're just amplifying that. And down the tip tends to be 
a little bit darker. This is really not something you have to do, but just if you want to add just a little bit more detail, you could even make it look quite dirty, like it's just pulled from the earth. Just a super cute way to finish that off. So we're back to sewing our ears now because they're nice and dry and you can see that glue has them popped up beautifully there and I've just got a little bit of a curve forward. So I've got my single strand of pearl thread in an eight ply. I'm taking my needle in through that head opening there, bringing it out between the layers. It's a single strand with a knot in the end. And what I'm going to do is just sew a blanket stitch around the entire outside top edge of each of those ears. Again, refer to that video. If you have any issues with your ears being uneven, you can always trim them. So I'm going to keep my stitches nice and small. Now I am using a deep brown here because I sort of want to imitate the idea of watercolour and those darker outlining lines. It also helps frame up the top edge of Peter Rabbit. So you can see I've got a nice little binding edge happening there. I'm just going to continue on right the way around that ear. As you get to the top of the head, pull those edges apart to make the top of that head meet and then continue on down to the other side. There we go. So that completes the stitching. So that head is all closed now. Beautiful little shape we've got there. So final step on the head is that we're going to add those buttons. So we add them now because that way we can pull them in from behind. And it really is just a matter of sewing on a button, but pulling it tight as you do so. So I'm just going to come in from behind and I'm using black thread because that's going to give me a nice pupil with that eye. I need to estimate where that's going to sit. Pull that through, making sure that's nicely centered. And taking it straight back through to the back. Now I'm really going to compress that as I go so that that is pulling in. You'll notice too, it's a two hole button and I have those two holes just going on a slight slant upwards. So I'm going to squeeze that and continue to stitch it on, keeping that tension up so it's nicely pulled in. Then I'll knot off on the back. Then I'll just repeat with the other side. So that completes my Peter Rabbit head, all ready to attach to the body. Now to do that, we're going to need a nice decent size button. This one is about 30 millimeters, 25 will do it. Um, and we need to decide where on that neckline we're going to add the head. So it's just about having a look at, having a look at your positioning there. You don't want him to be too long in neck and you don't want him to have absolutely no shoulder. It needs to be a happy medium and it should look, look right in the shoulders. It's very easy to change that placement if you're not happy with it. So you can see where I have it sitting at the back there, button will go on here and we will travel through. So I've got a double strand of extra strong thread. You can make it four strands. I find that a double strand is more than enough. And we're going to go, first of all, we, we're going to go straight through one of those buttonholes. So I'm starting on the right side and I'm taking my needle straight through the center front and making sure that I'm going through straight. 
and it should be just one side. So I'm going to pull that through, then I'm going to let that button drop down. I'm going to take that head and I've already got a pin marked there about where I want that to sit. So I'm going to dive my needle in and I'm going to take a nice big chunk, travel across, so one nice big stitch, make sure it's central, travel across, and then we're going to make our way back through again. So back through the other side, we're going to come out at the back in the center, which will be the other side of that button. Which we have here still in place. So it doesn't matter if you're using a four hole button, we're only using two of those holes. So I'm gonna pull that all through. We're gonna make sure that everything is straight going through. And what you should have is your Peter Rabbit head in the right position, ready to pull in. Pull on those thread ends and you can check that head positioning. Check that that's where you want it to be. Check that you've got a nice little head tilt there. If it is exactly where you want it to be, remember that you've got him hanging onto his little carrots gonna sit here. Then all you need to do is compress all of those layers and knot that off nice and firm at least four times and then my needle is still on so I'll be able to just dive it back in, come out somewhere in the body just to hide those thread ends. So that has his head beautifully in place. Now we just need to add the tail, which we do in exactly the same way. So I've got a button ready. It's going to sit on the lower part of the tail. And we're going to follow the same procedure. We're gonna take our needle straight through. We're gonna go into the back where I've got it marked there, come in at one side, take a big bite across, come back through, travel back through the tail and the other side of that button and do the same thing, knock that one off and lose those thread ends. So now I just want to make it possible for Peter to hold his carrot and I want him to have his carrot sitting on the opposite side to his button so that we still see all of that. All I'm going to do is come in from behind and stitch those two together. I'm just going to drop a stitch in just as we have before. I've got a double strand of extra strong thread. I'm gonna come through and just pull in one stitch, knot it off behind so those two little hands are joined together and then I can slip that carrot in in between those, uh, the arm and the body there. And so that, my friends, completes our beautiful Peter Rabbit. Well, my version of Peter Rabbit anyway. So I've kept him so nice and simple for you all. I know that he will make just the best companion to Jemima. So many of you have made my little puddle duck beautiful nursery gift to give to somebody having a, a new baby just the beautiful softness of it i love it i love that watercolor look but of course you can go absolutely crazy with your colors and make them up in all sorts but don't they look absolutely fabulous together so thank you so much for joining me and i hope it's a new one to add to your collection so I hope you've all enjoyed seeing my little version of Peter Rabbit come together and I think by now you'll all agree. Very, very simple project. I think we're going to see quite a few of these. I probably need to create some more of the Beatrix Potter characters. So talk to me in the comments below. Tell me who you would like to see. I do love Squirrel Nutkin. Um, so there's quite a few there we could play with and I will keep them all in this simple theme. So looking forward to Masterclass launch coming up very, very soon. Remember, there's always a giveaway with that, with that one. So make sure that you tune in. In the meantime, keep on sharing your creations on our Pay It Forward page. And I put the link for Masterclass 
and our Pay It Forward page down below. That's our Facebook group, a great fun group, incredible work coming through there. Thank you all for your support and most of all, for sharing all of your creations with us all because it really does keep us all going and keep us inspired. So I'm finalizing all of Masterclass this week. So I'm very excited to show off this month's project. And of course, there's always going to be more happening on Pay It Forward right here. So talk to me in the comments or chat to me on Instagram. I love to hear from you all. So everybody, have a fantastic creative week. Make sure that you pay all those good things forward. And until next time, it is Huru from me.